like, hey, Sandra. <laughs> We're back. <laughs> We're back. Still screaming, screaming louder than ever. Wow. Wow. Are they ready for us? I don't know. I mean, this is like, I think this is like technically season four, but here we are. It's It's been a while. We, we, oh my gosh. And we have so much more to say. I mean, seriously, so much has gone on uh, since we saw all of you last, but even more exciting uh, people that we're interviewing now. Don't you think, Carrie? I mean, I think so. And I think the conversations are really, you know, the pandemic changed us all on so many different levels. And I think those conversations are more open, more honest, more real. I mean, not that they weren't when, what, when we were going through all of it, but I just think it just changed us. So we really felt like it was important to start this again and to have these conversations. And who did we interview today? Erin Morley. The amazing Soprano. um Erin Morley. Isn't she amazing? Yeah, I really enjoyed talking with her. I, I've never talked with her before. This is a you know one of those first ones for me. And I just thought I want to be friends with this woman. I like her. <laughs> Talented singer. She was a young artist at the Metropolitan Opera in the young artist program there. And you know, oftentimes young artists get kind of pigeonholed into that. We didn't even talk about that, but no. uh, I mean, that's part two that we, we need to do with her, but right. she really has found her own stride, her own voice, literally and figuratively in the last few seasons. And it's so beautiful to watch how she's blossomed into this complete artist performer. Amazing. Culminating with this amazing magic flute that they just did at yeah. the Metropolitan Opera. It's super so, cool. It was super cool reading about that and watching the clips and um, made me wish I was in New York to go see it in person. I, I think, as she says in this um, interview, that it was one of those productions that you really needed to physically be in the theater to to really appreciate the whole um, project. So, yeah, I, I love talking. Well, there are some really like awesome gems in here, especially for young artists. Um, and honestly, for all of us, I mean, just really finding her balance, finding her, as you said, her stride in her career. So um, thanks, Erin, for doing this. And um, yeah, I can't, I know the comments on this one are going to be so awesome. So I can't wait to put it out there in the world. So stay tuned and watch this clip. And uh, we're back. And if you haven't subscribed, do it. More interesting, fun things coming with that too, right, Carrie? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's exciting times. All right. We missed you all. Yep. Bye. Bye. It's, it's really nice when you see somebody on stage who is in tune with their body. You can, you can tell. Yep. And it puts the audience at ease because you feel like they're in control. Yeah. Um, and so it's not about being a certain weight. It's about having a certain comfort with taking up all the space that you take up mm -hmm. and beautiful um and not apologizing for, for any of it and it's about the elegance with which you move mm -hmm. and the intention of your movement when you sing and how that helps you tell the story i think that's all really really important to the to the art huge huge can we just put up i mean like can that just be the hashtag of or like the story of every day PSA PSA for opera singers yes PSA. Yeah. that was beautifully yeah. said thank you so much for that erin morning erin erin morning hey she's connecting the audio Oh, I got the copy tongue. Yes. <laughs> Yay! Erin! Success! Y'all! Yes. We can, we can Girl do this. Power. Oh, gosh, you guys. I'm sorry that took forever. Guess what? It's absolutely fine. You're good. Okay. We all, I guess we I all forgot have... how to Zoom. I haven't Zoomed in a while. You know... I had to practice this week because I wanted to make sure that I was going to be okay for this today. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, we're kind of out of practice too, but... Um, Welcome to know. the Screaming Divas. Welcome. Thank you. Do and we scream? 
Well, um, you know, you know where the name came from. Like we, all the pictures of Carrie and me together, or Carrie separately and me separately, and you because of what we do. You know, they're always like, right, with our mouths open. They're the welcome to my uvula. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Please enjoy and see how many fillings I have. You know. Yeah. 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 I know. I know. Oh, that's that's the glam part of the job. Yes. Isn't it? And so our mouths are always open. And then when Carrie and I are together, we're always talking. So, and very few photographs, which is kind of hysterical. We forget to take <laughs> pictures of whatever we were doing. So, yeah, maybe. What maybe. Else? Okay, where are you? I'm at home right now. I'm, um, this is my little practice room that, um, this is where the magic happens, ladies. <clears throat> All right. I love it. Okay, so those sound panels that you have on the wall, do they actually work? Yeah, actually. So when I when I first moved into this house, I realized this room was way too live. Oh, okay. And before the sound panels, I had like a full on queen mattress in here to suck up some of the sound because it was oh. just like it was like singing in a bathroom. Oh, so okay. I yeah, I got rid of the mattress and bought some less ugly but still ugly sound panels can i can i make, oh, i like i like singing in a bathtub i'm just gonna say that I no, like it's not it. the worst thing all the time it's it's not it's better than singing into a closet true or couch you or know, that sock. Couch oh my God. <laughs> carrie what were you gonna say i wanted to ask so uh so you're a mama you've got three kids three right so three yes so do they know when you're at home and you close that door to practice, like don't bother mom? Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. So does but that it, also turn into your like private space? Like I need a hot minute. So I'm going to close this door. Don't bother me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is like the sort of my, my office space as well. Like I, okay. yeah, this is the one sacrosanct place in the house where like they can't bother me because even the bathroom isn't private. It's just like, yeah, you know, that's how it is. And so, um, so this is a place where I can come to, yeah, really have some privacy. And it's in the basement, which help, which helps because nice. sort of like they can't really hear me because, you know, when I'm practicing in their space, it's always like, shut up, mom. Sure. You know. Do you get this? Do yeah. I? Okay. Do you get this? Like. Oh, oh yes. Oh yeah. I get, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. You have a Grammy, correct? Um, sort of, not really. I have, I have, um, I have, a, a Grammy for the ring cycle, oh, which, cool. you know, which, um, which I, I played Volklinda and good at Emerong. So um there's a million people in the ring cycle and so you know like nobody got a trophy except like you know the, the the five people who were who were headlining it which makes sense of course but I have a nice I think it's right there yeah that's that's a nice certificate they sent everybody um and then the other one is for the Rosen Cavalier nomination was it Rosen um, Cavalier um, yeah um, yeah, that's oh yes. I remember the nomination, but I wasn't sure if you had won it for that. I didn't know. Yeah, okay. we. I think we were. So there's a few. I I need to frame a couple more because there were a couple more nominations for I think Dialogues of the Carmelites. Okay. And then Eurydice also got nominated, which was right. really nice. Yeah. So I think technically I haven't won a Grammy. But I like these nice certificates. They're pretty. I think they're kind of cool. I, I was like, I mean, I loved your video during the pandemic of you playing and singing, which we're going to talk about eventually because that was just super awesome sauce. Um, I, I was like, oh my gosh, like she's a real musician. That's amazing. <laughs> um, but I, well, I um, but with the Grammys, I kind of like, or nominations, um, I kind of wish that they were like all on your piano, like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> I, this, this, is, 
I have to put them in the basement so it's not so obnoxious. I don't know. I maybe maybe if I actually win a real one someday, I'll put it I'll put it upstairs. Right, right on your piano while you're video playing for whoever. Okay, we've got to talk about the recent production you just did at the Met. Yes, the Magic Flute. I mean, I, which you just finished, right? Yeah, Saturday was Why? our last show. I have Why? numerous yeah. questions about that. Yeah. <laughs> Um, it, it was it was the coolest production, you guys. I loved this production. It was so much fun. It was so much work. Um, oh, it was a lot. It was intense. The rehearsal process was very intense, but very rewarding. It was it was a it, it's it's. I mean, the production's been around for ten years, so it's not oh, really okay. new. It's not okay. it's not brand new, especially to Europeans. They know it pretty well because it's been around. Um, but it felt brand new to us. And uh, Simon McBurney was our director. To his credit, he didn't really just regurgitate what he had done in the past. We really oh. dug in to the characters together and, and cool. you know, we could change what we wanted. We had so many different versions of the dialogue. We really talked about what we needed to keep in to make, especially Pamina's character make sense. Um, in and German or English dialogue? Sorry to ask. In German, in German. Um, and actually that decision also went back and forth. Should we do it in English? Should we do it in German? We, we eventually settled on German, which I'm very happy about because um, I don't love to switch languages mid-show. I think mm -hmm. that's hard. Mm -hmm. And I also, I also think there's, it's a well enough known piece that um and and there's not too much dialogue so that it's like what? what's happening i think i think people know what's going on already but but um they've also heard it a lot and so it's not um so inaccessible in german um so, so I, I and i i love the flavor of the language you know it's just it's a beautiful language i love speaking in it in it just it's fun to to kind of yeah Are you fluent in it no no definitely not um but i can get by i can get by pretty well um i tried to do an interview in german once and i ended up switching to english i love that you're like um this is not working bye okay <laughs> that, that has happened to me in all three languages um that i i i, I tried i tried yeah um, I, I think it's important to try actually um because you can't get better until you like you know really just sort of jump in and and try but uh yeah so i, I didn't go i didn't see the show but i saw the clips you know on social media and stuff like that and when I saw you in the harness, because they fly you, you and, and Larry Brownlee, um, did you have to sing like that? Or was it just like swimming in the water kind of a thing? Not so much singing. It was it was maybe a, one phrase of singing in that harness, but but uh, mostly on the ground singing. Um, okay. So it was really it was really um, just about um making the trials really beautiful and interesting and you know the the trials of fire and water can be the least interesting part of the show right but they are like in a lot of ways the most important part of the show right. and the flute solo and it's called the magic flute you know it's a really it's a beautiful moment and sometimes it's like that's it wah wah <laughs> so so I really love what he did with this with this um, scene. Um, the the fire is really. I mean, it's so hard to describe. One of the things I love about this production is that it has to be experienced. It can't be. It's not like you can get a sense of what it was in the clips that they shared. Mm -hmm. It's not even like you can get a sense of what it was like if you watched the HD broadcast. Okay. It was meant, it was meant for the theater. It was, it's a theatrical experience. And I kind of love that because a lot of things are conceived for film now. Mm -hmm. And the people in the theater are not getting as much of an experience as the people in the movie theater, right? And this Agreed. was 
Yeah, this was really conceived as a theatrical experience. And so um, it's, as I've been trying to describe it to like family and friends, I'm like, I, I can't, I don't know that you have to just see it because there's a lot going on. And when you're in the theater, you get to choose what you look at. When you're in the movie theater, right? they tell you what to look at. Right. 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 So it's a totally different experience. Um, the flying bit was like, you know, the water trial. All of a sudden we're like engulfed in, in water and, and swimming through it and we're able to breathe magically. And, you know, and it's, it's beautiful. Um, and there are these amazing sound effects coming from the Foley artist who was cool. on the side of stage. Right. Um, she was like doing sound that. effects, right? Weren't they? Yeah, sound effects like old fashioned and high tech sound effects sort of mixed together. Um, so there was all of these sort of like bubbles that she was blowing when we were swimming. Um, really nice done little- live. Uh, Done live, like not, not pre-recorded? Done live, done live. Yeah, and she was visible to the audience. You could see all of this. So it was really, you know, and you could choose whether to look at her or not she wasn't center stage she was off to the side same with the visual artist who was drawing things right and so um i just thought i just thought it was a very smart production but i think more than all of the um technical wizardry that was happening i really appreciated the character work that i got to do with simon mcburney okay um I think he really understands this opera in a way that's um, through a modern lens, but also through a lens that is like, what what would Mozart and Schikaneder, would what would they have created in that time? What would it have meant to those people in that time? And how can we recreate that for a modern audience? So, um, you know, and it's it's an interesting mix of genres, this piece. Magic Flute is a Zingspiel. It's an opera, but it's it's like a people's opera, right? And there's there's a lot of um characters that don't really have to be cast as opera singers. Right. Um right. So you have like vocal virtuosity in there, right, with the Queen of the Night. Mm -hmm. Um and you have some vocal extremes like Sarasho, super low, Queen of the Night, super high. But you also have Papageno, who is singing folk music, folk tunes, really. Mm -hmm. And you've got Pamina and Tamino, who are singing like lyric music that's really quite beautiful, but not as challenging as some of the other roles, right? Mm -hmm. um, sort of headed towards the bel canto vain I think yeah um and and so what's interesting to me was to kind of you know figure out how to um how to play Pamina in that context like she's she's not the vocal fireworks of the show that's usually the role that I play <laughs> I usually <laughs> sing the high notes but this was an acting challenge she was an actress. The first Pamina was 16 or 17. She was a member of Chicanator's troupe. She was an actress who could sing. And um, I think her role is written as an actress. You know, it's written to be, I think a good Pamina is a good actress. And um, you also have to sing it. You have to sing it well, because it's, Mozart and it's exposed and so you know all of the things that that Mozart requires are in there as well like but can I say can I go back to what something you just said which I find really striking that Mozart wrote this more for an actress than a singer yeah and that, that that to me is very striking because we think in our business we think of Mozart as like the, oh, you know, you have to have a perfect vocal technique to sing Mozart. And if you want to go and work on your voice and, you know, make it better, you go and you work on Mozart. You're told, go work on Mozart. 
And yeah. you saying that this was written for an actress. Yeah. And I think the the role only works unless Pamina understands her journey, like really understands the through line that builds up to that suicide scene, which mm-hmm. can seem so silly if it's out of the blue, but it's not out of the blue. And so what we worked on is like, what what are the pieces of trauma that she experiences that really leads up to that? This is not to say that Pamina is easy to sing. Mm-hmm. Um, I think there is a, a kind of, a different kind of vocal virtuosity required of simple Mozart roles. Um, like the beauty of Mozartian simplicity is over, it's all over those those young soprano roles, Serlina, Susanna, Pamina. Um, but they're so exposed that if your technique isn't really on point, it it can be really terrible. Ding, so, ding. right? Um, so you know, it's how it really is, is, isn't it? It is. It really is. It's about legato. It's about musicianship. It's about phrasing. It's about connection between notes. It's about breath support. Um, it's about intonation. Oh gosh, I mean, it's really tricky yeah. because all of that, you know. <laughs> All of that, like really, you know, um, interesting chromatic stuff that happens in Akish Fru's, um, if it's out of tune, it's terrible. So it's sort of like, yeah. it's, it's, yeah. it's in a way the singing is thankless, but it's also, um, it's really rewarding if it's good. Yeah. You know, well, it's also really rewarding to watch when it's just deliciously good, you know, because yeah. if you've engaged me, then I, I want to even if your acting isn't so much there that at least that's there. Does that make sense? Like, I mean, I want, yeah. I always want both, but, um, cause honestly, this isn't one of my favorite operas and I've seen too many productions where I'm just bored out of my mind. And so, um, you know, if you don't, you got to sell it on all levels. You brought up yeah. the aria. I read through all the reviews. I'm not a big review fan, but I just, you know, I, I hadn't seen it. So I just wanted to see what other people were saying. And, Somebody did talk about that aria with you and about how the beginning of it was faster than what you would normally hear. Is that true? And if so, why? And how did that feel in your body if you've sung this role many times? What was that like for you? Oh, that's interesting. I didn't, uh, I didn't, I never, I never thought we were say that again what did they say it's I didn't read this they talked about the first half of the aria being faster than than the rest of it and and it was like in a way was questioning was that a choice was that a you know was there a reason behind it and so it made me curious now I don't really give a shit about reviews so um so that's why I'm just kind of okay okay, we've cussed so that's like 500 calories I just lost I love it I love it I love it I love it um um, I um I actually like reading reviews okay um I um of course I don't love it when they're bad but I I care about reviews Ooh, I'm going off on a tangent here for a second but a lot of people tell you not to care what people think I think it's her job to care what people think I think that it, you know, I agree with you I, uh, I used to not read them and I do now not I, not in the I last think- 10 years not to me i mean not the sources the sources i mean if you you understand the reviewers that understand this music you understand yeah. and now there are some bloggers especially young people that really love this and i want to know what they have to think because they're going to be buying the tickets for the next 40 yeah. years so i care about that but there are too many reviewers out there that really don't understand and when somebody mixes up a character with a singer or all I read about is the production, I'm like, this is bullshit. So I'm sorry. Like, I, I absolutely agree with you. I think that, you know, it's not my job to believe or respect what's been written, True. but I do care what is out there in the ether, what is being said. And I do care how that influences what other people write and what other people think. And then I think it's important for, for instance, I think it's important for um, when a reviewer doesn't understand why something didn't go well, Mm -hmm. 
I think it's important for us to start talking about that stuff. Okay. Right. So that's why I read them, you know, because I, you know, I have a, a certain experience as the performer on stage that they're not having, they don't have all the information and some of them are smart and some of them are not smart. Um, and, and so I feel like sometimes it's my job to kind of talk about why things didn't go well. Let's talk about set design, for instance. Yeah. Let's talk about the conversation surrounding, um, oh, we can't hear the singers. Something must be wrong with their technique. <laughs> yeah. No, I know. How many times have we had this happen? How People, many times have we had this happen? Look at the look set. Look at the set. Look at oh, the well, set. I'm sorry, but that also is in control of the conductor. So I, you know, when a, I'm going to be very honest, when a conductor says to me, I can't hear you, that's not my problem. I'm sorry. I mean, unless it has something to do with like the, um, the staging, if there's something wrong or like what you're saying with the set, but, but part of me is like, if you can't hear me in the pit, then that's really, I mean, there are other factors in, involved and I, yeah. maybe you just need yeah. the orchestra down because sorry, I mean, most conductors right now are letting that blare so loud that there's no, nobody's following the dynamics that are written in the score. So right. I'm a little jaded are, with that. Oh, I feel you. And there are so many factors to this equation. There is yeah. so many things that can affect this. And um, when a reviewer blames it on something that has nothing to do with what's actually happening, then we got to start talking about that stuff. And we got it because yeah. it's not just it's not just the responsibility. If the set has no acoustic sense, the set is wide open and has no back. If the set is made of carpet, if you know, like, how about some sound reflective materials? How about a rake? How about some wood? You know, there are sets that are that are really smart, and there are sets that are absolutely sabotaging the singers. Totally, and that, that's the beauty of social media now. Yes, you can talk about it. It's the beauty yeah. of the Screaming Divas interview. We can talk about this stuff. Yeah. We can talk about whatever we want. And that's the beauty. Yeah. And you are so brilliant at social media. Oh, well, thank you. We have to talk about that. Do you do it yourself or do you have people helping you or is it a combo of both? Are we allowed to ask that? You don't have to answer. Sure, sure. You, you can ask me anything. I I do it all myself. Um, I Impressive. Uh, I, I think I just have a hard time outsourcing my my identity. I feel like social right. media is is a really hard thing to outsource for me um, because I think what makes it special is um, is seeing the artist's point of view rather than the artist's publicist point of view um, and. And having, I think people like having a little, um, a little bit of, of, of a connection to the person. It's not totally raw and honest and, and, you know, it's not, it's, it's n nothing on social media is going to be completely, um, authentic, the whole authentic it's never the whole picture but I don't pretend that it's the whole picture and I don't think anybody should um so that's kind of how I approach it I mean I I I try not to drive myself too crazy with it but I do enjoy it because I like having a connection with the people who are enjoying this art form and I and I I have I've tried to outsource it a few times because it is a lot of work Mm -hmm. Um, but it, it never works for me. I don't know, maybe some other people have cracked the code, but I, um, I think, I think it's something I, um, I enjoy too much to outsource. And I also, um, really want to make sure that I'm presenting the identity that, that I want to present to people, especially I've shared a lot about my pregnancies. Yeah. Um, and I think that that's, um, and that's because it's something that doesn't get talked about a lot yeah. um, or maybe not in the way that I like. And so I'm trying to put out a lot of um, 
helpful, hopefully, helpful information about okay. what the experience is like. Did your voice change? Not fundamentally, like not like a lot of people experience like, oh, my voice got richer after my pregnancies. That did not happen for me. Um, my voice definitely changed though. I, because how can it not, my body changed so drastically. Yeah. Um, and so for me, it was really after my first child, um, she was a C-section and that's a huge, huge body change, lots of recovery time and, um, you know, dramatic weight gain, dramatic weight loss. Um, and all of those things affect your voice. And so after, after Maria was born, it was like, okay, I'm going to have to learn how to sing all over again. That's what I'm going to have to do. And yeah. so it was like starting from ground zero. Okay. And, um, and so in that way, yes, my voice has changed. Now it's, it's not automatic. Now I really have to be a conscious singer and I have to take really good care of my voice because, you know, it's, it's, uh, the, the connection to your body gets literally cut away when you have a C-section. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, People so, don't talk about this. They don't, yeah. they don't talk about the female body just in general in singing. Yeah. Well, and yeah. also what I've been, what I've heard, I've, and I don't have any children, but that, uh, when you have it vaginally too, that's a whole other issue when you talk about support and pelvic floor and all those things. So, um, yeah. I think both, both ways of birthing a baby can cause all kinds of havoc and, and yes. learning how to reset, I guess, if that's the right verbiage to say. For yeah. That. Yeah. And I've had three very different experiences with birthing. I had a C-section and then I had a natural vaginal birth and then I had an emergency C-section. Whoa. <laughs> so Whoa. I've kind of had it all. Um, You've got a lot of information then for, for singing mamas. You've got a lot yeah. of info. That's cool. Okay. Yeah. And because I have that experience, I kind of feel a little bit of a responsibility to kind of share what's going on. But I also, you know, I had three pregnancies that, you know, I, I also experienced all of the work loss, you know, all of the like sudden unemployment that came with being pregnant. And so that is that's an experience that, you know, those are conversations that are really important to talk about too. So did they not hire you because of the risk of the pregnancy, meaning like you could be injured and then they're worried about, yeah. you know, is that, is that what you mean when you say this? So I had a variety of different experiences and some of the cancellations were my choice. Um, okay. For instance, with my first child, um, I was supposed to be singing Rheingold, the opening of the Met season in, what was it, 2011, 2010? Mm -hmm. um, new the new production um, with Lepage, right? So with the machines, she's, she's flying. Oh my you know? goodness. Okay. And that's the whole concept of that production. And so that was a very easy mutual decision. Like this is, this is not going to be mm -hmm. right. Um, uh, in the case of, of um, my third baby, I, by that point, I felt like I know how this goes and I know what to expect and I know my body and I've sung a lot of things. Uh, you know, I've, su I've sung some roles a few times now. Mm -hmm. Um, the summer of, um, of that pregnancy, I was, uh, let go from two jobs, uh, which were both roles that I knew super well, and I knew I could sing them pregnant and they were, um, not dangerous stagings. <laughs> and I, you know, I really, um, I was very upset about those cancellations. Um, did you do anything about it or did you just say? I was, I was paid. Um, okay. And to the extent that we've seen some progress in the industry, it's that, you know, we now are getting paid when we're let go. It used to be, I mean, that's, that, that's my third pregnancy was mm -hmm. never paid before that. 
for a pregnancy cancellation. Um, so I appreciated being paid, um, mm -hmm. but the, there's so much more that's not measurable that you lose. Right. And um, those damages, are, they cannot, they can't really be replaced. No. Um, and so, um, you know, I just was very um, specific about how I wanted the press releases to be worded. I was not withdrawing. These were dismissals. And um, I made sure that nobody said that I was withdrawing because I was pregnant. I knew I could have sung those roles pregnant. Okay. And, um, and I knew that they, the staging was very clear to me. I knew that it would have been safe. So that was disappointing. And we have, we have a long way to go. We need to do better. Did they, mm -hmm. did they do what you asked in the press? Did they run? Eventually, eventually, yes. Yeah, but it, 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 I had to fight, I had to fight. Do you have to let them know that you're pregnant or is that, I don't know by law if you have to even tell them. I mean, if I'm talking about the States, I don't know where this was, it doesn't matter. But um, I mean, I didn't think that you had to say anything like that. No, you don't. I, and I actually advise singers now who come to me and ask for advice. Mm -hmm. I advise them to not say a word. It's none, it's none of anybody's damn business. Right. It's, it's not. It's your body and you decide what to do with it. Mm -hmm. And if you, you know, know. That, yeah, yeah, if you know that you can sing this and if your costuming needs to change, then it needs to change. Mm -hmm. So what people gain weight all the time and lose yeah. weight. I mean, it's like, and a, lose you know, weight all the time. yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry, yeah. have babies all the time. Mm -hmm. And have babies all the time. And here's how I feel about the whole thing. If if there are, if I'm willing to do this crazy thing called being a mom, which requires a whole lot of sacrifice from 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 women to to bring children into the world and to raise them to be good citizens. I mean, I'm getting on a soapbox here, but no, if, no. if I'm willing to do that for society, then society better respect it and better support us in that, in that job. Because we all need moms. We all need them. We need them to be good. We need them to do, uh, to, to raise kids that are uh, good citizens and good people. We need them. Well, I mean, honestly, I don't think anybody's, any of us would be here without our mamas. I mean, there are no people on the planet without moms. <laughs> That's it. True statement. Mm -hmm. I want to ask, now going the pendulum swinging the other way. Oh, here we yeah. go. Oh, I know. Here we go. Do you find it hard to find balance? Ooh. Yeah, I mean, for sure. That's a sort of yeah, never ending battle is it's just every day it's like how do I get this done and that done you know um I have dealt with that by basically just not accepting every job I can't okay. um I can't do that and be the kind of mom I want to be um as it is you know I'm spending a lot of time away from my kids you know, Sandra back when last year, when we were at La Scala at the same time, oh. I was away from my kids for seven weeks. Whoa. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was a long time. They came to visit for 10 days, broke it up, but it, you know, that's still a long time for a kid in middle school to be without yeah. her mom. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I have to be really judicious about the things that I accept and I'm, grateful that I'm in a position in my career now where I can be a little choosy mm -hmm. but it's yeah. it's hard it's hard when you when you are building your career and you can't be that choosy and you know we uh basically I mean the reason this has worked is because my husband is a rock star um love he I mean he's just everything he's everything John is amazing He's, um, he's got his own very demanding career and he's very, very, he's a, he's an incredible scholar. He's a law professor. Um, and he also manages to be a super dad and he's just so supportive of what I do. 
Um, and so, so he has really enabled me to, to, to be everything that I can be. Um, and so that, that's key. You have to choose a partner wisely. Um, but also, I mean, I'm relying on a lot of help from childcare and from neighbors and from, you know, nice people who are helping me raise these kids. It takes a village. Even if I wasn't an international opera singer, it would take a village. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't be everything to your kids all the time. So you need people. And we all, we all need each other to help do this thing. Um, so I, yeah, I, I've sort of built a, a network of people around me who are wonderful and, um, and I'm really grateful for them. I'm really grateful for them. It's hard. Um, it's the biggest thing for me right now. Balance is what I'm fighting with because all of us, you know, if, if we were all cloned two, three times over, you know, we could all be working, 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 working. But I think at this point, quality over quantity. And I don't know if you agree with that. Carrie and I, we've yeah. talked a lot about this, but I would rather do something that fulfills me, my soul, my, my inner being, even if it's not as much money, if it makes me happy and it's fulfilling in my career, I would much rather do that than, you know, five or six different things all lined up back to back to back to back and then dealing with the fatigue and not seeing our loved ones, you know? Yeah. But I, I, everybody's different. And that's the beauty of this, this business too, yeah. is that we can kind of set that for ourselves, right? Yeah. I think everybody um, will find their, their, their own equilibrium, but it, it's the fact is that we can't do the job well unless we are, you know, uh, filling our lamp with oil when we're outside, right? We can't actually give as much as is required. And it's so much is required. So much is required for this job. You give so much to a rehearsal process. You give so much to a perform to each performance. Mm -hmm. You can't give that if you feel empty. You can't, you can't do that unless your personal life is engaged, is, is, you know, unless you're, you're filling that, that need. Um, and that looks different for everybody, but I, yeah, I, I have pushed myself too far definitely sometimes and then you realize okay we're not doing that again um <laughs> and then there and then there are times when i haven't had enough work and i feel like oh there's this huge part of me that is not being fulfilled and so and then i become a shitty mom <laughs> right so, it's all there about it is. balance isn't it it's all it's all about balance it's all about balance in my in my 54 years right you know i've finally Duh, figured out, you know, it's all about balance. Yeah. And it's, and it's hard. I know. And we all sing better when we're happy. I know my manager says to me, Sandra, when you're happy, you sing better. So please be happy all the time. <laughs> yeah. You're like, sure, okay. said than done. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm going to put man. that down on my to-do list. Be happy. Be happy. Yeah. I, yeah. I think, um, I don't know if this is for men too. I can't, I don't want to speak for them, but I feel like as women and there's part of this caregiving, nurturing thing, whether you have kids or a relationship or whatever, it's always about taking care of everything else outside of you. And I learned, uh, you know, in this break that we've had of Screaming Divas, cause we, we needed, we hit a wall in our own personal lives. And so we um, need to just, you know, take a second. And in that second, I learned through going to therapy that um, me taking time for myself, and it started as 30 minutes, wasn't a selfish act. It wasn't me not taking care of everybody else and everything else, but it was 30 minutes that I took for me to do whatever I wanted to do. And there was no guilt associated with that. There was no emotion associated with that other than like what you said, fill your lamp, I think is what you said. Phil, I needed to fill the cut back up for me so that I was a better human and a better 
just everything that I gave was so much better because of that. And um, what was interesting was that it was 30 minutes or an hour. And I really enjoyed watching myself choose what I was going to do during that 30 minutes or an hour to refill my, my cup like that. And um, I've been talking about that for like a year. Well, how long now? A year and a half or whatever, since somebody I mean, yeah. actually talked me into doing that. Um, Cause it took a while. Yeah, I mean, you were like, Ooh. I can't do this. I'm like, I love to read. So I, you know, I'd pick up a book. I'm like, okay, I'm going to have my 30 minutes of reading. And while I'm reading, my mind is like, what the hell are you doing? You need to be doing. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, you have 10 more minutes left. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. And so you then it was something like that, Erin. Yeah. Did you take, you take care yourself? of yourself in that way. Oh yes. Oh yes. There you, you have to do it. Otherwise like you, you crack. <laughs> I crack. <laughs> But I wish somebody had told me that a long time ago, that it was, you know, that you, you can do that for yourself. I think that's huge. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's my philosophy of, of life, but also motherhood is, you know, you can't give anything unless you've really taken care of yourself. Um, so, you know, uh, a mom that's there 24 seven is not by definition, a better mom. <laughs> Right, nope. the mom who is who is present when she's there, is is more meaningful to me. Right, the one yep. who's able to really put in quality time mm -hmm. and make it make it really count. That's much more important to me. I had a mom that didn't work at first, you know, when we were young, and then I had a mom that went back to work, and I don't remember any difference in the quality of my mom being an awesome mom you know what I mean it was kind of cool actually to see my mom go to work and be a career woman and all that kind of stuff and what she accomplished in that career so um I, yeah I think you're totally right it's all about quality than quantity yeah yeah, yeah. so during the pandemic then whoa <laughs> whoa um, just to like rewind, uh, you yeah. were there 24 seven with, with the kids and the husband, uh, right? Yeah. Oh, the pandemic. It was I know. time. I mean, um, it was like the best of times and the worst of times. Um, and there was hardly any balance to be achieved at all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and I think the hardest part of it for me was um, trying to do my job while I was trying to homeschool and mother three children who couldn't really go anywhere. While my husband was Zoom teaching from the bedroom. You know, like that was insanity. <laughs> Oh my goodness, I can't. And I can't. everybody wanted a home video. <laughs> oh, didn't they? We did too. I, yeah. I'm sorry. You set the gold standard for home videos. May I just, uh, may girl. we just comment on that? You're at home from the Met. Oh my you, gosh. You shamed all of us. Thank you. Everybody. Oh, no, 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 no. That was, that was a beautiful day it was a beautiful day we just sat and watched for four hours and it was so i loved that gala so much it was definitely the scariest performance of my life um you know like i'd never accompanied myself for a performance like that in that in that way um and so that was scary but also just the whole format was so new and now it doesn't seem so crazy but whoa that was such a risk and i can't believe it went so well as it did but it was so it was beautiful amazing. to go from continent to continent and see all these people in their natural habitats right wasn't that beautiful yes but i have to, but she's right though i mean that wow. you were the highlight to me i was like yes girl i, I mean it was, and i would have never even known that you were nervous i mean you just sat there like you did that every stinking day you know i'm gonna like accompany myself and i'm gonna sing this and it sounded it was free and easy and beautiful wow. and it i mean i it, i mean i think everybody lost their shit when they watched this honestly <laughs> i mean if there was like live comments everybody would have been like oh my God. i mean it was amazing yeah. No. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, to, to, to a certain extent, I do do that every day, you know, like that, that's what my practice has been like for years and years and years. And so it wasn't, it wasn't that weird to, 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 to show it to people. 
Um, cause that's how I practice, you know, that's how, okay. that's how it goes for me. And actually one of my challenges has been to, to, to get myself away from the piano mm -hmm. because sometimes I spend too much time trying to do both at the same time. And I have to really isolate my voice and yeah, but, mm -hmm. but, um, but that's, that's kind of, that was like a, a window into what, what my practice looks like and what it, you know, I try to learn all my accompaniments. I think it's cool. really helpful. Sure. Um, but it, you know, it was just fun that day. It was just fun. Nice. Um, you can see it. So you can, I'm you glad can people see. liked it. Yeah. I'm we glad all they enjoyed it. It meant a lot to me. I think it meant a lot to a lot of people, but, you know, I think it was, uh, yeah, it was an important thing for everybody that day. Mm -hmm. So did you work, I, you work with Gerald Martin Moore, right? Vocally? I do. Yeah. Did, who did you zoom is in? another... Who is another singing pianist actually like you know it's actually kind of fun to work with somebody who can who can give me pointers on both instruments <laughs> um, uh, yeah i i started working with him after julia was born so about six years ago um yeah he's wonderful he's really wonderful and um you know we we work quickly because I think, and I appreciate that because I don't have time. <laughs> yep. I've got time. Yep. Um, so he, 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 um, he's very efficient, but he, he, he also, he can diagnose a problem really fast. And, um, that's, that's really valuable to me. Um, I think there's a Instagram video I watched. Was it Instagram? A video I watched you that made me laugh. I was like, wasn't that the realness right there where you were trying something and it was over and over and you're like, that sucked. That wasn't pretty. Yeah. Or whatever you said, that's not pretty. Out choices and stuff. Uh -huh. yeah. That made me laugh. I was like, that's so true because that, you know, I'm in, I, I remember, I mean, I'm out, I'm out at my lake house and I, one day I had all the doors and everything open and I was like, oh, I got to practice. And I just kept hitting note after note. And I know that I live in a basin. So everybody is hearing this whole thing go down. So I think that's why I kind of laughed at your video. Cause I thought it's really the truth, you know? And for me, yeah. I'm hitting all these horrible notes and I looked down at my sleeping dog and he could care, you know, not high seas. He wasn't, I thought he'd wake up and start moving, but he was like, ah, oh, this oh, is. No. He <laughs> snored louder. Yeah. But I love that video. I mean, what made you think to like put the video camera there and be like, I'm going to record okay. this. So here's how it goes. I, I drive to New Haven to go see Gerald and then I record basically everything. I, 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 have oh, okay. way, I have way too much. I have way too much recording of myself, but it's how I learn. It's really a valuable right. skill, right. Uh, a valuable tool for mm -hmm. learning. So I, I record everything. And then on the drive home, I listen to the recording. Cool. Um, and as I was listening to this one, I just kept laughing. <laughs> <laughs> and I just was like, this is actually kind of funny. So um, I thought it would be entertaining, honestly. But I, I also just thought it's, it, you know, it's useful to see, it's useful maybe for, for young singers to see that um, this isn't something we roll out of bed and just do well. It's, it's not automatic. It's, we, we are we're working all the time. It's hard all the time. All the time. It doesn't just come out. Um, and so, you know, like I, I, it's not their fault, but sometimes you meet somebody, they find out you're an opera singer and, and then you say, well, I, 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 you know, I'm going to go work now. And they say, well, what, what do you, what do you mean? What are you going to do? Can't you just like warm up in the shower or something? Like, don't you just, and they don't get, they don't get it. Mm -mm. The, this 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 skill takes so many years to develop and and so many hours in front of the piano every day and people don't know they don't know, they don't know that and so I thought for a change you know I I we're used to to presenting the finished product and that's great I love finished product I want to mm -hmm. hear your finished product mm -hmm. but I also I also think for a change you know like it's, it's important for people to know how much work goes into this. It's good for you. Tedious work. It's painstaking, yeah. like listening and changing and tweaking. And people need to know it's hard. It's also and, raw. 
people need to know that it, it for us to expose that and to to pull back those curtains and say look at here is us actually not being perfect is very difficult vulnerable i know yeah. carrie hates people listening to her warming up Ugh. and mainly because yeah, i really I, hate i hate listening to that's my version of hell is people, <laughs> especially tenors right next door to me warming up i really like seriously my, my, or i just want to be you know, like, the technician in me wants to go like knock knock, think, knock, think, knock, think, knock. Think. do you really think that that's gonna help you <laughs> no boo. no mm -mm. No, Honey, people, let me tell you, you're just banging those chords together. That's not helping. That's not called warming up. That's called just slamming the chords together. Well, I you... remember a time a year ago when we were at La Scala, Sandra, and mm -hmm. um, I was just screaming away, mm -hmm. trying to learn whatever role. I think it was probably Norina or Lachme or something. And I was, I sounded terrible. And it was just like over and over trying to like figure out how to. And then I walked out of my dressing room and realized that the whole cast of Umballo y Mascara was sitting right next door getting their makeup done. Hi, Nick, sir. But you sounded fabulous. Now it's Lachme. <laughs> you lie no i'm not lying I, I would tell listen i am too old to lie anymore i've officially decided that i don't lie it sounded and this was the first time i had met you sandra and it was like oh this is my own personal nightmare <laughs> okay Hi. but i would have been the horrible human being that would have been like would somebody go tell her to go find another practice room i can't concentrate with all that racket going on oh seriously if i had known and i think i said something awkward like oh my gosh there's no privacy in this building i can't honestly i can't remember because yes it was it was a tenor who was complaining oh. about it i was like really people like you know get your fair program. totally fair fair Man. But you know, my biggest pet peeve is people coming up to me and saying, oh, you're an opera singer, sing something for us. Oh, yeah. oh no. Or, oh, are you in the Phantom of the Opera? Yeah, <laughs> opera, grand old Opry? I mean, oh, people, you know, um, listen. Yeah, go. No, go ahead. Not just, you don't ask a doctor, you don't ask a gynecologist at a, at a cocktail party. Hey, you know what? I have a little something going on. Can you just look at that? Don't ask an opera singer. Will you just sing something sing for something. us? Um, yeah. You I know, think what, what bothers me about that is just that there's no awareness that it, it takes a lot of hours to get ready for a performance, right? Yeah. I think that's what bothers me about that. Like, I don't just have an operatic voice when I wake up in the morning. Maybe some people do. I do not. It mm. takes a long time for me to get ready to sing. Yep. carefully and safely yep. so yeah um, there was one thing I wanted to say about what you were talking about voice and all that I I think that people also forget and sometimes singers forget this too that it's actually it's not just this it's actually the whole entire thing so if my body's out of whack or I mean that can cause all kinds of havoc up here and can cause different stresses up here if my body isn't well well taken care of and actually as I've gotten older that's even more important than it was in my 20s because you know in your 20s you can pretty much do anything but um physically so mm -hmm. it's a huge as I get older it's that's a huge thing of taking care yeah. of me from head to toe Absolutely. I, I mean, I've seen a lot of people start talking more and more about what they do for their body mm -hmm. to prepare for a performance or, um, you know, to enable them to do lots of things on stage. Um, but I think, you know, for me, I, 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 yeah, the body's the instrument and it is so connected. And I've found a lot of value in things like exercise for sure, but also, um, you know, Alexander technique and um, acupuncture and massage therapy, like all of those things, especially during the run of Zauberflöte just now, because it was a physical show. Right. And, you know, I was, I was doing a lot of body work in between shows. Mm -hmm. To, to keep myself flexible and strong because that's that's 
exactly what we do with our voices right. when we warm up, right? It's about flexibility and strength, both. Um, and so, so, so we have to, we have to do that for our bodies too. Um, and it's, you know, you can, you could also say it's, 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 it's really nice when you see somebody on stage who is in tune with their body, you can, you can tell. Yeah. And it puts the audience at ease because you feel like they're in control. Yeah. Um, and so it's not about being a certain weight. It's about having a certain comfort with taking up all the space that you take up mm -hmm. and beautiful um, and not apologizing for, for any of it. And it's about the elegance with which you move mm -hmm. and the intention of your movement when you sing and how that helps you tell the story. I think that's all really, really important to the to the art. Huge, huge. Can we just put up, I mean, like, can that just be the hashtag of, or like the story of every day? That's the ESA for opera singers, yes. ESA! Yeah. That was beautifully yeah. said. Thank you so much for that. Okay, what would, you, as an opera singer, what would you tell yourself, like at 20, starting out in this business? Would you say anything to her? Oh my goodness. Yeah. When I was 20. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's so many things I didn't understand when I was 20. Um, yeah, I would, I would tell my 20 year old self to take better care of myself. Mm -hmm. I, I think I, I just, I didn't really get that until my thirties and definitely more now into my forties, but I, I'm my 20 year old self lived and breathed the art form you know only and didn't take care of myself I, I you know I loved I was a I've always been a very extreme personality and when I do something I want to do it like 150 percent and so that idea of balance has been very hard for me to achieve but it's kind of you know I've, I've had to learn it because it's been forced upon me um, I would tell my 20 year old self to get a handle on basic things like eating and sleeping. <laughs> Isn't that huge, huge. Nutrition and recovery time and rest. And mm -hmm. like, I, I just, I did not know how to take care of myself. I was just, um, I was a disaster. <laughs> and um, I, you know, it, for me, it took becoming a mom to realize that I had to take care of myself in order to take care of other human beings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, it, it's sad that it took that long for me to figure that out. I would like I would like young singers to understand that you cannot give anything until you have taken care of yourself first. Yeah, and if that um, includes something I don't know, like skydiving. <laughs> bring that up I'm so glad you brought that up I mean what <laughs> you guys it's the best you have to do it it's so cool <laughs> okay why and did you scream bloody murder when you jumped oh yeah for sure I mean I think I was sort of like laughing um uncontrollably slash crying slash screaming it was sort of like oh. <laughs> yeah were you attached to somebody? I was attached to somebody. Yes. Yes. Were you, definitely. Were you like, Jesus, I'm not ready to meet you. So please make sure <laughs> I, my feet land on the ground. <laughs> yeah. I mean, okay. This, I went skydiving during the pandemic. Okay. I think that that's important to point out because I hadn't sung in almost a full year in front of people. And at that point, I think there was a screw loose, but also, <laughs> but also, um, I missed adrenaline just on a very basic level. I missed the 
sort of sequence of events of being nervous for something and then doing something scary and then the aftermath of it, which is performing. Right. And that's, I mean, you have to actually kind of like adrenaline in order to be a performer. So I, I kind of like came away from the whole experience, like feeling, feeling like I learned a lot about myself, like, oh, this is a big part of who I am. Mm -hmm. I, I like adrenaline and I rise to an occasion and I like pressure. Is that sick? Think? No, 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 because we all, all you know, we were all trying to figure out how to channel all of our, I call it insanity, all of our insanity and all our creativity. And how are we channeling this? If you have nowhere to go, I mean, listen, I'm so happy. My husband still wanted to be married to me after the pandemic. I mean, I, I lost my business. I mean, I was like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do with myself? Let's create screaming divas. Let's learn how to do all this computer stuff. I mean, we all freaked out in our own ways, but you yeah. skydiving, that's like the epitome of what we all needed to do. Maybe we all should have just gotten together with our COVID masks on and just jumped out of a damn plane. Wow. So did, was your oh, husband know, right with the mask on, with the mask on. skydiving with a mask exactly. on? Exactly. <laughs> Was your husband like horrified or did he do it with you or? Oh, horrified, horrified. Um, he, he hates this kind of thing. He was, he was on the ground. He, he went with me to be supportive. I told him this is what I wanted for my 40th birthday. And uh, that's what we did. And, and he, <laughs> I think he was utterly horrified. Just, just absolutely terrified. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. I actually was, I was talking to Anzif yeah. Um, uh, a, a little while back, our wonderful Anziv. Chairman um, of the board of Metropolitan Opera. We have to. Chairman pretend. of the board. Chairman of the board. Um, she, she, I mentioned that I liked to skydive and that I did it during the pandemic. And she was like, oh, I've been skydiving. <laughs> she went with Dmitry <laughs> Wodostovsky. So the next totally thing. did. The next thing you have to do is the cold water plunge, Sharon. Oh, I'll oh, do that is, fun. Is that a thing? Is that a thing? What do you do? Um, so I did that with Dimitri and Anzif as well. Oh uh, my gosh, how cool is that? Where you was just dump yourself snowing in ice? Out. Well, no, it's snowing outside and okay. Anzif's property had this stream that kind of ran through it and it was snowing. It was winter. And so Dimitri's like, let's let's jump into the cold water. And you know. Here we are, like two Metropolitan Opera singers. And so, of course, Anne's assistant was there with the paddles, just in case one of us had like a heart attack. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. Exhilarating. <laughs> I mean, like you, I was screaming and crying and, and you think, why did I do that? But after you get out of the water, you're like, let's do it again, let's do it again, let's, let's do, it, do again. it again. How many <laughs> times have you been skydiving now? Was it just the once or have you gone again? It was just the once. Okay. But I'm doing it again. Don't worry, I'll do it again. Hot air balloon. I think Ugh. you need to. I see. I mean, I seriously, I think the whole way down, I'd be like, Jesus, no, I'm not ready. <laughs> oh, Siri just said what? <laughs> I don't know what, what that means. <laughs> no, the oh, whole way down. The whole way down, you'll be like, this is the best thing ever. It's the way up that's hard. It's the right before it that you go. Oh. Am I really about to free fall out of? an airplane <laughs> what's wrong with me yeah uh, yeah cool no, it's, good. Well, I, it's impressive i think it's super impressive okay are we rapid, rapid fire? fire are you up for rapid fire rapid fire go okay we're, we're trying new ones now new okay. season so we're doing new stuff so two cool. words one or the other ready work or play play love or friendship that's a hard one. Love. <laughs> Love. Money or happiness? Sorry, say it again. Money or happiness? Happiness. Yes. Cats or dogs? Dogs. Okay. Summer friends. friends. Sorry. Yeah, right. <laughs> we can all be friends. We can all be friends. Dogs. Always dogs. Okay. Go ahead. We Summer have or winter? Summer. Summer or winter? Summer. Morning or evening? Morning. Ooh. Would you rather fly or have super strength? Fly. 
Okay, do you watch shows one episode at a time or binge a whole season? Ooh, used to binge. Now I'm lucky if I catch 10 minutes of something. Right. Night out or night in? Night in. Are you more of an introvert or an extrovert? Probably introvert. Fresh food or fried food? Fresh food. Do you kill bugs you find inside or take them outside? <laughs> oh, um, it depends on the bug. <laughs> okay. Yeah, like a roach I'm killing, but pretty much everything else I'll take outside. I will take a spider outside. I will take a spider outside. I do that. Wow. I do that here. Yeah, in the be cannonball into the pool or just dip one toe at a time? Cannonball, baby. I want to see and that. I need I need a video of that this summer on your Instagram, okay? I'll right. work on that. I'll work on that, Carrie. Okay. Um, uh, are you more of a thinker or a doer? Doer. Cool. Do we, do we want to ask the last one still the same, Carrie? What do we yeah, want to do? I think it's kind of appropriate. Yeah. Shall um, I let you do it? Me? Yeah. Uh, what do you want God to say as you walk through the pearly gates? Yeah. Oh gosh. Um, uh, you did good. You did good, kid. You did yeah, good. Yeah. Well, we're you here to tell okay. you, you did good. You did and good. You're doing, you're doing so great, Aaron. It's, it's really <laughs> beautiful for both of us to see, you know, just how you blossom it and to at least to me, I think in the last two, three seasons, you really have just, Huge. You are, you've arrived. Oh, right. It's a beautiful, Thanks, you guys. beautiful career to watch. And I love all the conversation. Maybe we need to have another Screamy Divas with you about motherhood and talking about uh, what you went through physically. I think that would actually be a really helpful video. So I'd um, love it. A lot of people. But, but I'd love it. Honestly, thank you. And it's so nice to actually get to talk with you. I only always <laughs> see you in uh, passing. It's like, oh, hi, I, know. Hi. <laughs> I know, I know. Like the Mercedes Best Gala. Hi, oh. bye. But you are amazing in that, by the way. Ooh. You oh, are amazing. All my friends that were with me were like, yeah. Who's that? that girl. Yeah, oh, you know, gosh. We got to know that girl. We got to follow uh -huh. her Thank career. you. So Thanks, guys. It's, it's such an honor to talk with you both. It's I love the Screaming Divas series. It's so good. It's so good. Well, we're so we glad to be back our... doing it. We There are more conversations to have, and we're so glad that both of our lives kind of came together at the same time. We, we've been talking, we've been canoeing in different boats, paddling upstream for a while, but we finally like hit shore and we're ready, ready to run. And we're so excited to do this again. There's so many conversations to have. Nice. nice. Who has been put into a group and we are much better. <laughs> thanks Aaron. thanks Aaron. thanks you guys good to bye. see you good to see bye. you too bye okay how do we end this <laughs> <laughs> it's been a I while people it. dying okay leave it you ready yeah you sure? <laughs> <laughs> Screaming Diva. All right. Season, season four. Season whatever. Four. Still, season still four. screaming. Still screaming. Uh -huh. Ready? Okay, I think I got shit on my teeth. Okay. Okay. It's happening. Do 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 Aaron Morley, Aaron, hey. Aaron Morley. Where, hey where, girl, what's up? <laughs> are, we, are we like all the single ladies? Yeah. Jazz hands. Okay. Jazz hands. Jazz hands. We have no Aaron Morley. She's she's like, uh, she saw this and was like, I'm out by. <laughs> she's like, no. Do I really have to talk to these crazy girls? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. No, I love that. Aaron Morley is connecting to audio. Hello, Aaron Morley. Hello, Thank you for Morley. Oh, her sound's off. 
Yeah. Burp, burp. I think she's home now. Oh, is she? So maybe that means That's she's good Wi-Fi. Mm-hmm. Aaron Morley. Oh, she left again. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad I'm trying. that the video covers up all the hairs I haven't plucked on my eyebrows. It's really, really bad. You can't even see it. Right. 